If I could keep time in a bottle or a big giant kettle like they do here at City Built in Grand Rapids, yep. Chief Beer Officer Dave is here. You literally have a big bag of time I've got in, your, in your kettle because you're all making... All the time you could need. All the time in the world. <laughs> all the time. Time stands still. Yeah. Uh, we're making a blueberry blonde with thyme. Um, we like to incorporate some interesting flavors here at City Built, not just the typical hops and yeast flavors that you, and malt flavors that you would get. There, if you, if you look on the menu, and we rattled some of them off earlier, sure. it, this is herbal brewing. It is. Uh, I've, I've been inspired. I, I picked up a book called Sacred and Ancient Herbal Beers um, from the library. Our Grand, Grand Rapids Public Library has some awesome resources for brewing. So anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. If you can make soup, you can make beer. Uh, inspiration struck. I wanted to, it's blueberry season here, uh, so I wanted to show off some of our great local produce and uh, yet still have a, a different flair than everybody else that makes a blueberry blonde. How much of this is a culinary background? Yeah, uh, I, I do love to cook. I love to watch cooking shows. Like I mentioned, I, I'm uh, an addi addict of uh, WGVU's Life channel. Um, my girls and I love to sit down and watch a British baking show. What's it called? British Bake Off? Yes, Friday. Is it Friday nights? Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm watching with you. So uh, that's places like that is where I often get uh, ideas for new flavors. But the proof is how good it turns out. How often right. do you nail it? How, how often is it, does right. it work out? Well, my strategy is to start subtle and work my way up. So I try to shoot low and still have interesting stuff. So it usually works out, I would say, probably close to 100% of the time. All right, well, I have to try. It's called Chaga Khan. It Chaga has Khan, yeah. Chaga fungus in it. Yes, it does. It is. Uh, it's more of a woody fungus that grows on birch trees. It's really hard. You actually have to grind it in the coffee grinder to turn it into a powder. All right. Well, it sounds medicinal to me. Yeah. It is traditionally used by Siberian and Native American healers, but... Okay. Well, I need some healing. Let's yeah. go check it out. That's I feel as though I'm having a Gene Simmons moment. We're gonna tantalize the, the tongue here. Yes. We've got the chaga fungus in this beer. Yes, our chaga con. What am I going to taste? It's How's a, it gonna tantalize my tongue? It, it, it first have a big uh, mouth coating feel from the, the full bodied chocolate stout. And then uh, some of that roasty, toasty notes from the malt will come in. Yes. And then we'll finish with a very complex, woody earthiness from the chaga mushroom itself. You nailed it. But yep. herbal brewing, Let, yeah. let's see what you have here. You have some... So we have some malt and some hops. Yep, got the basics. That goes into pretty much every beer. And then um, we also add some other interesting stuff like lavender and chamomile. Um, and we have those two together in our floral saison. I also use the chamomile and a green tea in our flower power, which is a famous one. And um, I'm drinking our Amore Estivo, which is Italian for summer love. Uh, it's got lemon, zest, and basil, so very refreshing. Amore. All of this is very clean, it's very fresh. Yes. Is that what you strive for every time? Yep, I, I, I'd like to have subtle yet interesting flavors in my beer and keep it light and easy to drink. Subtle, interesting, delicious. City built, Grand Rapids, Chief Beer Officer Dave here. Thank you, my man. My pleasure. All Cheers. Right. Cheers, and thanks for joining us on The Draft.